Hello and welcome to my garage. Firstly apologies that it's been so long since the last video. No reason why, I've just sort of been busy with other things and in, in the UK at the moment the weather hasn't been all that great, just a sort of a wet and, wet and miserable November and December. Um, also some great news that we've passed the, uh, the 2000 subscriber mark on this channel. In fact it happened a, a couple of weeks ago now so thank you to everyone that subscribed to the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet please do so, it, it doesn't cost anything but it really helps me and the racing if you do subscribe. And to celebrate this occasion, I'm going to do a, a video that a few people have requested, which is a brief walk around of the car, just going through some of the modifications on it. I hope to make a more in-depth video next year, giving the full details of the construction of the car. But for today, let's just have a look at it. So looking at the general profile of the car, you'll see that it does follow the uh, the standard MGB shape. It does have the, uh, the fiberglass heart up on there. That's a sort of compulsory thing in the UK for racing. I think mainly just to make them look more period correct because there's a roll cage underneath that. Going down to the front now we've got an al aluminium bonnet on this one which again is a sort of a fairly fairly standard modification. Going around the front here you can also see we've got this sort of uh, this aluminium valet that's been sort of flush and mounted so it just comes out a little bit further than the original steel one does. Depth wise it's exactly the same it does have a it does have a sort of a light crease in it if you can just see it there which follows the uh, the same profile as the original steel one. The doors on my car are aluminium skin, so we've got a steel, the original steel frame underneath and then the skin, the original steel skin was cut off and then an aluminium one put on. We also run with full door cards in here and also you can see the uh, the windows there. There's no window winders, I, the, these are just sort of a push fit so they just sort of slide up and down, just held in by the, by, by, basically by the tension on the rubber. Also see we've got the, uh, the sort of early, well sort of mid, mid style door handle here. Which has the put, which has the pull handle, the pull handle inside, and also you've got the push button on the outside. The earlier cars had a pull handle instead, but uh, you are allowed to run with these push button doors in a keep series. You may also notice that this car has the uh, the earlier style narrow tunnel. This is compulsory for uh, for MGBs to race in the keep series and be be compliant with. The FIA Appendix K. That said, this is a heritage shell and you can see, hopefully if I just put the camera down there, you can see that this uh, that tunnel has been joined in onto, onto a later shell. The booklet on the car is also aluminium to give it a little bit of a, a little bit, make it a little bit lighter. You can see in there, I've just trimmed a little bit of the inner, hopefully you'll be able to see, a little bit of the inner steel frame has been removed, just again to give it a bit of lightness and you can see I've also drilled out the hinges there again to try and make this car as lightweight as possible. At the rear of the car I do have this sort of moulded in aluminium valance, that's not a fiberglass one, that is a sort of a handmade aluminium one that's then sort of flush fitted into the car. I'm not sure this is strictly FIA legal anymore but uh, for now it's, it's allowed to race and it keeps serious with it and I really wouldn't want to, uh, really wouldn't want to have to remove it. Moving around to the front axle now, you'll see that most of it's fairly standard MGB. We've got a standard MGB brake caliper there, solid, solid uh, disc rather, rather than the vented one. And we've got, uh, they're sort of, well, not quite standard MGB pads, they're a standard MG, MGB pad size, but they're actually Hawk, Hawk brake pads in there. They, they're getting a bit more tired, so they're going to need swapping soon. And I think looking at this brake disc as well, you can see there's sort of some grazing appearing on that. So again, that's going to be one of the winter jobs this year. Moving around to the rear of the car, the uh, the rear brakes again are essentially stock MGB. We've got a slightly uprated brake lining in there that should handle the heat a little bit better. The other thing, the other change really is the wheel cylinders. We moved to a slightly smaller bore wheel cylinder to try and force a little bit more of the brake into the front. I might look at those again this year because at the moment I think the fronts are locking up more than the rears. So I might just go one size up in terms of the uh, the wheel cylinder bore. For the front suspension, again we're using the stock MGB system, we're not allowed coil over dampers or anything like that, so we've got a, a lever arm a lever arm at the top there. That's an uprated one, so basically the uh, the valve on that has had some shims added into it, just to make that a little bit stiffer. You can add or remove the shims, depending if you want to sort of adjust the suspension. The springs you can hopefully just see in there, that's an 800, 800 uh, pound weight spring in there, so a little bit stiffer than standard and a bit and a bit shorter too. Um, these are also two and a half inch internal diameters, so I've had to make a small modification to the sort of coupling across member to hold those in. Uh, wishbones are, are the negative camber ones which I think give a sort of a one and a half degree uh, negative camber on the front there. And then you can see the anti-roll bar there, that sits in the solid aluminium block at the front and it's a 7 8, uh, seven eight diameter anti-roll bar there. On the rear of the car we're using lamp lever arm dampers, again we're not allowed to use uh, 
use the telescopic type or anything different. These are our adjustable lever arm, which have got this little uh, little knob on the back. Um, essentially, you can wind that all the way out uh, for, for, for the rain, so it makes it nice and soft, and then sort of firm it up for uh, for normal circuit racing. Probably sort of three or four clicks off the maximum when you use it. You can see the car has the uh, has the banjo axle. Unfortunately, the light here isn't great, so you can just see the the axle in there, all uh, all pretty much as standard. Yeah, the slight difference with the suspension are these parabolic springs that you can just see there. So still, still a, a leaf spring, but just uh, they've just got two leaves in them. That makes them a little bit lighter. But I know some people are going back to the uh, to the more standard multi-leaf springs now. The tyres we use are specific for circuit racing in the UK. These are Dunlop CR65s, which is a historic cross-ply tyre. Quite good fun in the dry, they are a bit of a nightmare in the wet, they don't really grip all that well, but they're the ones we have to use and essentially everyone is, is on the same playing field. The wheels are a fairly sort of standard uh, mini light 14, uh, 14 inch diameter, I think these are from John Brown wheels who so they're, they're fa fairly, fairly cheap and fairly effective. Now moving on to the engine which is probably one of the most, most expensive but probably the most uh, most important part of the of the race car as well. So you'll be able to see the Weber 48 carburetor there that's feeding the cylinder head. It's still a cast iron head and a cast iron block. We're not allowed to run with the uh, the aluminium cylinder heads. In the block we've got the 1.2 mil overboard pistons from JE. These give us sort of a capacity of about 1843 cc. We've got an all steel crank uh, that's made by Arrow, for, uh, made by Arrow, Arrow Precision, and then steel end caps as well. So just to try and make it uh, make it as strong as, poss as possible. At the back of the engine there, we'll see you've got this neat little catch can. We have to have this for racing in the UK. Basically, with a two-litre engine, you need a two-litre catch can, um, and that just takes the takes a breather in from the engine into the top there. And the cap itself, there, see, the cap itself is vented just to let the uh, just let the gases out. Over there, you can see we've got the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, pretty much a, norm, a normal alternator. Originally the car would have probably had a dynamo but we are allowed to use the alternator for racing in the UK. Standard MGB radiators, just one of the uh, just one of the brass ones there. And then at the front there you can just see, I think that's a, I think that's a 30, 13 row oil cooler fitted at the moment. I do have a 10 row one as well if it's really cold but certainly nothing larger than that. The other little thing here is a little cold air feed for the car rest. You've got a little a sort of a bell mouth at the front. That's just sort of zip tied in, going into that tube. That's then just pushing cold air over the carburetor there. The gearbox in the car is a four synchro. When originally these uh, the early cars would have had a three synchro, but a decision was made to allow us to run the four synchros in the in the UK racing, basically because there was no availability of the three synchro gear sets. You might be able to see this is a slightly custom custom cover here. This was made by uh, Clark and Clark in the in the USA and it's actually made out of fiberglass. Idea being that this to get the uh, the four synchro four synchro gearbox into the earlier shells it has to come back a bit and this so this whole cover allows that uh, allows the sort of gear stick to sit nicely in the car there. The final slightly trick bit is this little uh, little lever here. This winds in and out of the uh, winds in and out of the detent spring for the re reverse switch and it just allows you to sort of wind that in and then lock out reverse so you don't, don't select it automatically when you're racing. The interior of the car is very basic. We've got, we've got no carpet. It's just a just a sort of a race seat on its own there and then the full the full rake roll case goes all the way over over front to back um, so that it sort of secure, it'll keep, keep you secure. No carpets at all in the car. You can see the fire extinguisher there. Um, that's a 2.25 2 litre one. That's a fully plumbed in system. So if I just move the camera around, hopefully you can just see, you see the fire extinguisher nozzles going into the footwell there. There's one on the other side and then, then two more in the engine bay. That's the uh, normal wing mirrors on the MGB are really quite bad. I've got this rather nice BG Racing wide angle sort of rear view mirror that does give you a really good uh, really good view of the back of the car especially useful when you're wearing things like the hands device that kind of limits your uh, your side to side head movement. The steam wheel in the car is removable I have to do that in order so I can actually get into the vehicle because I've got these sort of quite quite high door bars and so I'm a bit I'm a bit sort of limited on space you can see we've actually got some electronic gauges in here for the uh, oil temperature we've got the rev counter speedometer that actually still works I've got a little line there at uh, so sort of 37 miles an hour, which is the same as uh, 60 kph, which is the pit lane speed limit. And then finally, we've got a, we've got an electronic oil and water gauge there. And then the gauge in the middle there is the Farringdon uh, digital display, which is a lap timer and also has a delta function as well. So it tells you if you're going quicker or slower on your laps. It's a normal array of MGB toggle switches, and then we've got a hazard light on the end there. Then also a, a rain light as well. You'll also be able to see we have these two uh, red red 
red levers at the bottom here. The first one is the electrical cutoff, and the second one here is the uh, the fire extinguisher pull. So in the event of a fire, you'd pull that, and that would then uh, that would then set that extinguisher off. On the front of the car here, in the uh, in the sort of the air intake wheel, these uh, two pulls do exactly the same thing. So the one this side with the E is for the fire extinguisher. Again, in the event of a fire, that gets pulled up. And then the one on this side with the sort of the uh, lightning bolt symbol, that's the electrical cutoff. So you pull that up and that then pulls up the, uh, the switch inside the car. In front of the car here, you'll be able to see there's a towing eye. This is just uh, for recovering a vehicle if you're off the track and, uh, you, and you've got no drive. Then at the back here, we have another one uh, exactly the same. In the boot here we've got a fairly uh, fairly smart looking custom fuel tank this has got the uh, the new cfc unit in there which is basically a swirl pot and and fuel pump all built into one all, all inside the tank and it's an aluminium outer that i had uh, that i had made up just foam filled and also being aluminium it doesn't uh, it doesn't go out of date like the, uh, like the plastic bladder ones do so hopefully this video gives you a sort of fairly brief overview of the modifications made on the car. We will be doing a more, a more detailed and in-depth in video covering the sort of whole history of the car and all the steps that, that I went through when building it. Hopefully you'll join me again for that. Until then, I wish you all a, a very happy new year. Hopefully 2021 might be a little bit better than 2020 has been for most of us. And hopefully I might see you at the racetrack anytime soon. Many thanks. Bye.